9 30. So I'm going to call to order the HHS meeting of May 3rd, 2022. A roll call, please. Can we chair Renahan? Here. Vice Chair Swarzy? Here. Member Selman? Here. Member Chaplin? Here. Member Desart? Here. Member LaPlante? All right, great. We have a quorum. Do we have any public comment? No public comment. And there are no remarks. Um, I'd like to take a, uh, take a motion to approve the minutes. So April 19th, thank you very much. Sorry, second? Yes. All right, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those are approved. Take a motion to approve HHS CO 0016-22 amendment to county sub grantee contracts. So uh, Second. and fishes, basically increasing the contract by twenty thousand dollars for an amended contract forty five thousand CFPG grant funded COVID item. I have a motion. I have a second. Do any questions here? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. I take a motion on HHS CO 0017-22. Amendment to a sub grantee so contract uh, with West Suburban Community Second. Pantry. This is increase of 67,000. This, like the other one, uh, is an increase for household supplies, personal care items, like those. Um, is there a motion and a second? Uh, questions here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Take a motion on HHSP 0161 22. This is for the care center. Approval contract purchase order to McKesson Medical Surgical Government Solutions for Incontinent Products for Care so Center, June 1st, 2022, May 31st, 2023. That exceeds 120,000. We have a motion. We have a second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is approved. I think motion 2022-49, contract with NDC Home Care LLC, DBA Wolf. Medical supply for rental of Zino pumps and accessories as needed for the care center. So moved August 1st, 2022 through July 31st, 2023, not to exceed $16,724. Uh, with motion, we have second questions here. Okay, okay Member Chaplin? Aye. Member Desart? Aye. Member uh, LaPlante? Not here. Member Selman? Aye. Member Swarzy? Aye. Chair Aye. All right, great. Thank you. That's approved. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve uh, authorization for overnight travel for information of so the borough moved. manager to go to the Illinois Department of Commerce okay. Economic Opportunity CSBG 2022 mandatory federal grant training May 31st and June 1st, 2022, $370 in Springfield. We have a motion. We have a second. Questions here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Um, on 8B, we basically have the same authorization for overnight travel, but this is what, two people? Mary, this is well, there's two people going to this conference. Oh, uh, this one person, okay. person A is riding with person B, and so person B is getting mileage, so that's why there's right. That's why we got a little difference in the amount. This is $640, also CSPG grant funded. Same conference. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Um, I'll take a motion to combine consent items 9A, B, C, and D. These all de decrease and close due to contract so being expired. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those are combined. I'll take a motion to approve uh, 9A, decrease and close pulmonary exchange, $10,190. 9B, decrease and close Medline, $14,000. 9C, decrease and close American Bottling Company, DBA, back at the first Snapple, $36,617.07. And 9B, Lakeshore Dairy, Increase and close for nine thousand eight hundred eighty nine dollars. Um, do we have a motion? Yes. We have a motion to combine. Oh, and I have a motion, motion to second. approve. Okay. Okay. Great, great. Thank you, Member Solomon, Member Sirk. Um, questions on uh, approving these? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Those are approved. Moving on to residency waivers. Is this one? Just one. Just yes. one. The other one's a presentation from. All right. Great. Hi, Janelle. Good morning. Good morning. We we do have a request for a residency waiver. We currently have 23 male and 39 female beds available at the care center. Three beds have already been offered to DuPage County residents, so there would be no um, DuPage, DuPage County residents displaced by these applicants. So the applicant is an 89-year-old looking for admission to the care center. Um, they themselves lived in DuPage County from 70, 1972 to two. 2016. Um, family has 
had another member at the care center under short-term rehab and states they received excellent care. The family lives in Glen Ellen since 70, 72 and has had a business in Glen Ellen from 1993 to 2021. All right. So I'd like to move to um, a second. Allow this person residency. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Questions, any other questions, comments here? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Sounds like an excellent match, Janelle. Thank you. Good. All right. Moving on to DuPage Care Center update. Janelle. Everybody has this document? Yes. Excellent. In the essence of time, I'm going to move along quickly, but I'll try and pause for questions. Um, I do have one update real quick. We are um, back on outbreak status. We did have a positive employee, um, so that affects one unit, and everyone um, in rounds of testing has tested negative. So we're still in outbreak for a period of time, um, and hopefully everyone will continue to stay negative. But I just wanted to share that with you. All right, so um, obviously the first page is the agenda. Um, then I included uh, nurses station, existing conditions. This is from the presentation that was uh, provided to you all in um, last year. So this is just a reminder of the current state from our prior presentation. That's what these photos are. So you can see the different nurses stations and the um, clutter. Turn the page again. That's a view behind the nurses' stations. It, it just depicts um, inefficiencies, lack of organized space. There is cracked and laminate, uh, broken laminate all around on the nurses' station in these desk areas, which obviously creates a poor service um, that's difficult to uh, keep clean, or in fact, unable to keep clean, which becomes an infection control issue. So then we have our first rendering from night, um, and you can see the nurse's station on the left of the picture, then you see the seating common area dining space for that particular unit. Down below that you see uh, they've included a copy of the existing condition from the same view. The benefits would be obviously flexibility for multiple activities to run concurrently, uh, fresh residential finishes with a wood stone on that stone wall, which I tried to get another rendering, um, but I don't have that yet. The stone wall will include a fireplace. So really creating a, a really nice home-like environment um, would be increasing our natural daylight, uh, protective wall finishings is very important for us and furniture that can remain in use throughout the day. So the scope of this work would include new vinyl floors, new wall finishes, built-in cabinetry, uh, activity supply, storage, new ceiling finishes with two by two LED lighting and the new nurse's station. So any questions on this before we go on to resident rooms? I do, I'm kind of furniture that remains in use throughout the day. What do you, what do you currently have going on? Is it disassembly or what is this? Um, it shifts between activities and dining. There is some shifting just based on, on the tables but it's all done in the same space. Okay. Any other questions, anyone, for this point? All right, great, go ahead. All right. There's another view on the next page. You can see from a different vantage point, you can see that nice nurse's station. Um, there is a floor plan where we mo we're modifying behind the nurse's station, uh, moving the break room to give more space for resident dining, uh, moving the vending and where the uh, CNAs chart, so we're flipping that around, that, that's that efficiency piece. So the uh, floor plan there represents um, those changes. Uh, so the next pictures include our existing resident rooms that show the, the worn cabinetry and hardware on the doors, broken, again, broken and cracked surfaces and um, very dark and unappealing. They turn the page again. There's more that shows the ceiling with uh, the different tracks for curtains and which are a requirement by the way. And um, the, the, again, the cabinetry. So when you go to that next page, you see our first rendering of a potential resident room. Um, they're using the Mora system. So you can see the different cabinetry options and we can modify it however we need. I really like this option because it splits the TVs. Currently the cabinets are on the outside, the TVs are, are together and that creates a remote issue because the resident goes to change the TV and they're, 
So uh, <laughs> that can be an issue. So um, we also have residents that have specialty TVs, maybe they're voice controlled or they need to be larger. And so we're working with the architects on how those could be handled as well, maybe a ceiling mount option. But our goal is to try and keep it as consistent as possible. But you can see just how much brighter the room uh, will look with that fresh cabinetry um, and uh, new flooring. And then the ceiling tiles are all being replaced and that different lighting will be very impactful. Any questions on that resident room? Uh, Member Garcia? Yeah. Quick question, Janelle, uh, for the TVs. Is, is there like a, 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 like separate speakers for the residents so they can hear their TVs closer to there? Because I, otherwise I think there's going to be volume wars. Yeah, um, they all have uh, TVs now. Generally, they're provided by the family, but this go around, we're going to provide TVs. And yes, there's some residents that have um, um, different uh, modifications for their TV. And that's what we want to make sure we accommodate going forward, whether it's an ADA. Yep. Okay, great. Thanks, Thank you. Shorzy. Uh, Janelle, you mentioned that the, the curtains are required with the yes. tracks currently in yes. the season. The, the, the new rendering doesn't have those tracks. Right. He, he didn't turn. insert those, but yes, they are going to be returning. They will be there. Okay. Yes. Right. Yep. Thanks. Um, so one of the things I want to mention too, is you see those closets, our residents were, when we discussed this with the executive council, they were very concerned about their space for their belongings. And it's the same space room and the same space cabinetry. It's just how the drawers can be designed, which, um, we will decide on a, a format for all the rooms. But the challenge was, is they originally did it with the cabinetry sitting off the floor, which would be a really nice feature for cleaning. And then the residents could get their uh, wheelchair, their feet underneath their cabinet potentially. But by doing that, we're decreasing that cabinet space and we can't go higher because of the sprinkler. If we went higher to the ceiling with that cabinet, we'd have to install a sprinkler head in each of those uh, under this new um, remodel. So. Um, it was really a great feature, but we really want to capitalize on as much space for the residents as possible. Are they allowed to put things on top of the, the space? No, nothing can be the nothing within 18 inches of the ceiling. Okay. What do you think? Do you like the colors? Yeah. Much improved <laughs> from the rainbow haphazard yeah. scheme you have going right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So the next section is, is about phasing. And, and it was a lot of discussion on this. How many rooms can we do at a time to capitalize on um, not only efficiencies, time, but also cost? So the first option here is seven phases, doing the north building, the four floors, then going on to the center south building, two floors, then going on to southeast building, two floors, and then um, the one floor on east. So this would be a maximum of 34 rooms offline, which is a great term to describe that they would not be able to be in use. 34 rooms at a time, which could be up to 76 beds, depending on the unit. Um, the duration of the project would be about 3.5 months. So the seven phases would come to about 24.5 months as an, as an estimate. So no resident construction personnel crossover. These are the benefits of this option. We would limit dust, noise, smell complaints, and the logistics for having a nurse's station offline are simplified. So if, if we did a one wing at a time, um, there are rules about the visibility from the nurse's station. Would you have to create a substation? Um, so those are things to consider. So this is the one option. If you turn the page, the next option would be doing like a wing or a wing and a nurse's station at a time, which comes in at 15 phases at least. Um, that would be max of 13 rooms offline. Um, that would be 2.5 months per phase, but with 15 phases, that puts us um, at 37.5 months. So option two adds an additional 13 months. So there would be a longer duration. They'd have to add temporary walls, barriers, demo to contain all of that. Um, the subcon it would add dollars to the subcontractor bids mobilization, escalation, and inefficiencies. And then other concerns would be obviously more susceptible to resident complaints for dust, noise, smells. And then they'd be sharing an elevator, which given our current state would not be um, good. So uh, the, la the, the next page then is like a Gantt chart showing you the timeline and how much longer that would be. 
so this was a, you know, obviously our, our goal is to grow our census post uh, pandemic. We really need to grow our census back up because of that loss of revenue. Um, and how far can we grow it um, over this period of, of three years? So we're going to have to limit if, if we choose option option um, one, we would have to potentially limit our growth in census because anytime you do a construction in a facility like this, there is offline beds that you have to take into consideration. So when we looked at this, um, there really seemed to be a no brainer once you, once you also consider the cost. So let's go to that last page there on this topic. So you can see the phasing cost, seven phases comes in at a total cost of 18 million four. The 15 phases comes in at 18 million eight, so almost nine. But then you have to add all these other components. So labor inefficiencies, temporary construction and general conditions, which would add an additional $2 million to the cost of the project. So we would essentially be taking 2 million off the top of our available dollars to try and touch as every space of the care center as we can just to accommodate a 15 phase plan versus a seven phase plan. So um, we've decided to go with the seven phase plan um, with our bed of uh, uh, licensed bed capacity. Um, it may require a lot more juggling, like if we have an infection control issue and moving residents around um, to accommodate that. Uh, but the team has become very well versed at moving people because of COVID. Uh, so we feel that the option one is our, our best option. And I don't know if Tim Harbaugh's on the line or Nick Jensen, and they want to yeah. add any comments to that. No, I, I think you covered pretty well. We can answer any questions you have. Um, the inefficiencies are just, we, our, our construction manager has staffing. The longer the staffing are there, we pay for them every month. That's one of, that's probably the biggest single synergy we have. In addition to that, with these contractors, um, it's really inefficient to have a painter come in there for three quarters of a day, a plumber, all those pieces. So with the larger pieces, it's much more efficient and, and that's where those $2 million in savings come in. And I know, I know Nick's online as well. If Nick wants to add anything, he's remote today. I think you got it exactly. Oh, who's talking, Nick? Is that you? Yeah, person? sorry. Sorry, yeah, Tim, you hit it. Uh, I didn't have anything else to add. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Sorry, we all think Nick. Yeah, we have this. <laughs> <laughs> including Nick from the sermon, we okay. were going to Vice Chair Schwarzy, Please, please refresh my memory on, on how we're funding this. This is, I'll go ahead, Janelle, I'm sorry. Oh, you're muted, Janelle. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, if you want to go ahead, Tim. The funding is our, is, we have three funding sources. The lion's share of it, 95% would be ARPA. Got it. There are certain components of this that are not offer eligible. We, uh, in that case, uh, Janelle has $2 million in the Ken Moy donation or approximately $2 million. Third piece on this as needed is that we have CDBG dollars um, and all of those have restricted, the Moy money is the least restrictive, all of them have restrictions on there. There are a few small components that we've, we struggle to make fit with ARPA, so that, that's where we would go with the Moy money. Okay. So Any these two the nurses stations and well, the resident rooms is the biggest cost item just due to volume and the nurses stations. So those are the two we tackled first. Um, we did uh, send them back to look at the pricing. The pricing came in um, higher than we would like. And so we sent them back to um, take another look. Uh, so then when we get to the next steps, once we solidify the nurses stations and the resident rooms, we would go on and review these other aspects of the pot project. Uh, which would be the fire system, shower rooms, the HVAC, the reception areas, flooring, handrails, oxygen, and vacuum systems, exterior, interior doors, lighting, and laundry, which was all in the original uh, presentation uh, to you um, last year. So then the goal, and Tim can certainly speak to this, is we're really wanting to present the entire project to the full county board in August of this year. We, we think you like, we like the 503 option and the animal services option where we go to the finance or full board, we present to everyone the entire project. You guys have your opportunity to digest it and then we'll come back uh, a meeting or two later with contracts. Um, sir? Janelle, you've talked about the challenges of doing the individual rooms and taking rooms offline in the nurses station, but what about some of the greater 
um, areas where people meet for meals and other activities. First of all, I don't know how many of those we have. Um, the, uh, on the page where you say resident lounge, view number one, the resident lounges. I don't know how many resident lounges there are, but is there only one? And if you take it No, each, each uh, unit where this building is compared to my other buildings, this building is very fortunate because there is um, dining space on each unit versus each floor. So like right now we can't use our RDR. We haven't been able to when we've been in outbreaks. So a lot of that goes into on unit dining or in the room dining. So we also have family rooms um, um, that have been used for dining. So we have a lot of options. Okay. So if the RDR, which our main dining room is just a, a fluff and buff, just some paint color, we're not looking to do mm -hmm. anything. That room was um, updated somewhat um, some years back. So big spaces like that, um, conference room, same thing. Um, we have large conference space. So we have a lot of uh, latitude for shifting things. And certainly COVID has taught us that. So RDR is residential dining room. I'm sorry. Correct. RDR. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. We are still going to have the bird, the bird that flies inside the. <laughs> yes, aviaries. Yes. I like these. They've been pretty lonely. The residents haven't been able to see them much, and they haven't been able to see the residents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember the chapter. Just to make a point, you know, about the funding, we really probably could not do this project if it wasn't for the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've heard a lot about, you know, that we're using a lot of this ARPA money for capital improvements in the county. But this is, in my opinion, just a great use of funds, um, a great capital project, because it really is going to improve our employees over there, the residents, the families, you know, it's going to be such a, you know, such a good use of, of this money. So uh, when we talk about capital improvements, this is really a great one, I think, so with the ARPA fund. I agree. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank you, Janelle. Uh, Phase one, I think, is going to be the easiest for the residents and the staff. You know, uh, if you do it for a longer time, it's so dis disruptive to everyone's lives. So, so I, I, you know, I'll be very much in favor of the phase you know, one because I think that's the best one for the care center. So, thank you. Thank you. And, and, you know, one more question, and it, you've answered this already, but I, I, I need some uh, reminder. When was the last time this? Was this building was updated and or? Uh, Each section uh, has different dates, but I believe the most recent was about 30 years. Thank you. And, and you know, we toured other buildings in the area and uh, uh, seen other buildings in the area. And, and um, we don't, I mean, they, they weren't like enormously extravagant. I mean, we can be competitive with this. This will be great for our residents. It will also be great for building um, our census um, and, and keeping us competitive. And the other thing I will say is we keep hearing that the access to qu quality care Medicaid beds in this area is very low. So the fact that we have over, you know, so many Medicaid beds that we're able to offer that over 70% of our uh, census is Medicaid, um, that is the mission that the county established. This is incredibly important. We're hearing more and more. We're getting more and more referrals from other facilities. Families are unhappy. There are, there are facilities right now that don't have, I'm not sure what happened with their kitchen. Maybe it's staff or maybe it's equipment, but they're serving fast food to the residents, meals in, meals out. So, I mean, we're just, it's, it's a struggle, but we're really doing well. And I, I have more to come on the Medicaid rate reform but the Medicaid rate reform has a component that if you if you provide more than 70% of your population as Medicaid, you get a higher Medicaid rate. So they're even recognizing the need. Um, the, the Medicaid rate, rate reform is appears to be something that fits the care center to a T. And um, I, I hopefully I'll be able to share more, more information with, with that as it's not, I don't think it's been signed by the governor yet, but more to come, it's a complex algorithm, but we're very excited at the potential impacts. But I will say, you know, all of this aside, this building is so essential to not just the County of DuPage, but obviously when you look at our outlier um, referrals and um, waivers that we're requesting, it, it's dire and it's becoming more dire. I think so tell, thank you. I think you can tell that the building hasn't been upgraded in 30 or 40 years because of those groovy 
nursing station colors. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a 70s to me. You just wanted to use that word, didn't you? Well, you did. <laughs> well, thank, yeah. thank you, the, the CDBG dollars that we received the last seven years have been yeah. a huge yeah. asset. Yeah. We've gotten a lot of critical repairs done that the funding would have been available. It wasn't that. that has been, would have been a challenge. Certainly, yeah, certainly for mechanicals and all those life safety code. I mean, those are obviously required and, the, and they help a lot. Um, yeah, we've been able to do minimal things. Artwork was one of the most recent. Our foundation has assisted us as, with special projects in the past and, and we're very happy to have them, but obviously, mm -hmm. This would this would be um, it would be a career changer for me. I mean, I've not had a full construction project in my 20 plus years of doing this. I've been in buildings where I wasn't the administrator, um, but so very excited. The leadership team is just thrilled at, at the uh, potential opportunity to move this forward. So we want to thank you all um, very much for your support. Say well, thank you, Janelle. Thank you, Tim. I mean, it's I think it's exciting for all of us. You're coming to us first, sharing all the news. It's exciting. We don't have to do patch up. We are actually going to do some you know, serious legacy work and, and really put our money where our mouth is when it comes to our taking care of our seniors and our new residents. So, thank you all for that. And um, we are going to hopefully maybe this summer have some discussion on Medicaid from your staff, right? Um, we want yep. to educate the committee a little bit about what goes into this legislatively and how we can better push kind of from behind. So, all right, great. Thanks, Janelle. Moving Thank on you. to community services, Mary. Uh, just a couple of quick things. Um, first, I will absolutely echo what Janelle said about access to long-term care for individuals who are on Medicaid. I'm sure every single one of our case managers would, um, would back that up, that that's absolutely such a critical need. And it's just tremendous that the county has continued to support that mission. So, um, and from the community development perspective, we've always been really uh, excited about anything that we can do over at the care center. We've replaced most of the windows, I think, um, over the last five or six years. Um, uh, giving to page days kicked off yesterday. Um, as of this morning, we're at, uh, approaching $100,000 raised of the $500,000 goal. So, you know, after day one to be um, Twenty percent of the way there, I think, is is great. So um, there's 95 organizations that you can support. So I encourage you to go on and see if there's maybe some new organizations you don't know about. You might want to throw them ten or fifteen dollars. So um, and then uh, there's a lot going on with the, the uh, DuPage uh, Transformation Partnership. As I said last time, the letters of intent um, are in. Uh, we've gone through and kind of weeded out the ones that we wanted to invite for a full application. So that process has happened. Um, but we're also in the process of doing the uh, information sessions for the transformational grants. There was one uh, Friday, and then there's one this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mary. Good old business. You do business. All right. Take a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Great. Great. Thank you.